have we have our, our list. We have our matchup. So, uh, <laughs> oh, all right. Spicy deck. All right. Well, you can already see it on the screen. There we have uh, Charles Kramer on the left of your screen playing Mono Green Infect. This will be the second second straight tournament I've done our commentary on, legacy portion, where there has been Berserk involved in one of the future matches. Berserk, so this is Berserk, Invigorate, Vines of Vast with Mutagenic Growth, and a bunch of green dudes who all have Infects. For those of you who haven't been playing Magic for all that long, um, I'm not saying the Infect deck is particularly good, but Invigorate is absolutely busted in an Infect deck. Yeah. It is far and away the most powerful card. It's a Mercadian Mask. It's part of the alternate casting cost cycle. And if you have a forest, you can get have them uh, gain four instead of paying the casting cost, which is green into Colossus, and it's plus four, plus four to a guy. So it's... You know what card I would like to see in these decks is Bounty of the Hunt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that would be sweet. Bounty of the Hunt is the uh, the green part of the... the less heralded part of the Force of Will cycle from Alliances. But it's, a, again, an alternate cost giant growth. Uh, Mike Hadley on the right hand side of your screen, and we don't want to forget him, he's also playing in this match. Despite yeah. the fact that his deck is a bit less exciting than Mono Green Effect, he's playing Goblins. Goblins was one of the most popular decks in, uh, in Legacy for a long time. Played by such masters as Jim Davis, yeah. Owen Turnwald. There's a long list of... Uh, Owen Turnwald's oh. actual breakout performance was uh, making the finals of Grand Prix Columbus uh, Legacy. Uh, with goblins. Why flash into Protean Hulk when you can cast a Siege Gang Commander, you know? <laughs> and the answer is there's plenty of good reasons. <laughs> Alright, so we have City of Traitors <laughs> into Plague Mirror. Plague Mirror. That's the first time I've ever seen that happen. So we got a blocker for the Lackey. More like he has a blocker for the Plague Mirror. <laughs> 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 Who should attack? I don't know. Yeah. And he can block and mutagenic growth. Yeah. There's a lot of ins and outs here. Imagine if you blocked in Bounty of the Hunted. Just imagine. Blue. It's probably worse than mutagenic growth thing. Bounty of the Hunt's counters, isn't it? No, it goes away in a turn. Oh, okay. I don't know oh, why they're right, right, Yeah, they're, they're counters that go away. Right, right, right. Because it's divided. That's why it's it was counters in some weird way. Okay, so they're trading off here. And then an Aether Vial. No, oh, no, no, I think we're going to see a Wasteland. Right. Yeah, he's going to Wasteland. Wasteland takes that out. All right, so let's see your traders once more with feeling. All right, we'll run that turn <laughs> back. <laughs> Was it the same black cat? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Kraber's mana base is fourteen four is four, and Bomb Next is four City of Traders. He also has four Elvis Spirit guys as mana generation. And that Lockie comes in. All right, we're good. Mm -hmm. Trade it off again. Yep. It again. Still treading water. Oh. What? I, I think he's debating whether he wants to block. He's uh, just taking it. Oh, wow. Here we go. All right. What is a... Uh, I don't really see much in Mike's hand. I think he has a ringleader. Does he? I, don't know, I wish we had the verbal communication to see if he actually blocked or not. Well, it looked like there was, there was some... Oh, I think he, maybe he's growthing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, he's blocking and, okay. and uh, yeah, he's blocking and growthing. <laughs> right, yeah, that was that was what the confusion was about. About whether he sort of picked up his creature to okay. in the yard, and he was saying, "Oh, I'm just picking up the block." I think. <laughs> so mutagen growth. He's gonna eat that lackey. And a Mog War Marshal, which is actually excellent. Almost all Kraver's action is on the ground here, with the exception of... Um, yeah, War Marshal is uh, definitely a bit rough. Uh, actually, some of his threats are okay. He's got Ikerclaw, Ikerclaw Mirror, Necropede, both reasonable against. Well, the War Marshal's going to give him a bunch of dudes that are going to yeah. uh, definitely interfere with that attacking. We need we need an Ink Moth Nexus, basically. So we have two Colas. I assume we're going to be cashing in our City of Traders here. And, uh, There's an Ink Moth Nexus. Oh, and he just says, go. Huh. All right. Sure. So Mike Hadley now has uh, quite a bit of presence on the ground there. But the Ink Moth Nexus can go upstairs. Uh, there is a Rashad Port in Mike Hadley's hand, so that's going to... Bummer. 
make it much more difficult <laughs> for, uh, for Nexus to get in. I th but I think Port is going to enable a War Chief this turn. I, don't, I mean, he can do it, but the risk is he can just flat out die here. Yeah. I mean, he probably just has to cast his cards, but it's not. It does not take very much for I mean, River to kill. He him. does have. He does have an Aether Vial, so he has the option of playing the Vial and just hoping to take it up to three and start casting his uh, his Chief type cards that way. Yeah, it's sort of hard when you're in in Hadley's position here because. Presumably you're not familiar exactly. Obviously you've gathered at this point that some sort of impact act. You don't actually know if what the likelihood of, of Kraber killing you next turn is. Right. And that seriously warps like how you want to make your play here. Right. So he's going to go with the conservative play, which is violing and porting. And he's like, eh, can I have four to attack? What's going to happen to me? Yeah. <laughs> So one of the tokens is summoning sick because the it came off the war marshal that just died. Yep. He also probably doesn't want to attack with both because then the uh, the other guy could get in. So draws for his turn. Has he drawn yet? Okay, it looks like we're gonna port that at Nexus. Yep. <laughs> so here, Craver draws. It's a f forest? Yep. So. Taking for a little bit, has two mana available to him. Uh, no play. So, so Hadley's Hadley, uh, just drawn a gem palm incinerator. Ooh. Which again, this is, you know. This is the big question mark is are you willing to lose access to your Rashad port to develop your board? What is the odds that you just die? Yeah. <laughs> I think at this point he seems to be he seems to be pretty firmly committed to the uh, the slow plan. Right, but drawing a gem palm incinerator makes it really attractive to Oh, he's going for yeah. it. This play has a ton of upside here because if he draws a land, then he can still port the Nexus. But if uh, he doesn't draw a land here, then he is actually just exposed to... To being dead. Yes. All right, Vines of the Vast Wood. Bang. Can't be targeted. Uh, he still draws from the yeah. cycle. It's a cycle trigger. So now it's pretty important to draw a land here. Yep. Just confirming here that he still gets a cycle. The cycle and the targeting are two independent actions. Right. So. And he draws. And I, it does not appear to be a land, so. He may be dead. The coast is clear. It has to involve some invigorates. I think he actually just drew an invigorate, so he might. This might just be a lethal. Yeah, just figuring out what to do. He only has three cards in hand, so. Is it basically have to have, have like invigorate berserk. All right, here we go. How much we got? Just confirming that the coast is clear, I guess. Like, uh, it's like oh, you can put in. I guess he was wondering what he could vial in. Maybe, maybe he's afraid of him violating in Mog fanatic. Uh, Goblin balloon brigade, perhaps. <laughs> that pretty bad. Oh, sure. <laughs> invigorate that. Do we have a berserk? No, they seem to be checking. Uh, is that it? That's all we got? It's five? He's confirming that it's resolving, maybe? Oh, he's giving him the life total. The life gain. Oh, no, it did just, he did just hit him for five, so. Okay. And I don't think... <laughs> I don't think Hadley is going to drop that pour down for the rest of the game. Yeah. I think that's going to stay up and we're just going to be spinning <laughs> yeah. the while. I think he's like, all right. There is no that chance. That was too scary. Yep. <laughs> Not quite yet. I don't think I can get it on that So you're going to leave a, uh, a token back to handle um, the Plague Mirror and then probably just leave the port up for the Nexus. Goblin comes in, porting the Nexus. Interestingly, uh, Charles could actually 
uh, if he had a way to, to kill Mike, if he had another Invigorate, and he had a Vines of the Basswood, he could activate the the uh, Nexus in response to the yeah. port, turn it into a creature, Vines it, and then kill him. It's actually sort of interesting that the, the, the Vines that he used previously to save his, his, his mirror, his mirror's not doing anything. You know, it's, it's possible that that Vines could have ended up uh, ended up being what he needed to, uh, to actually punch through with that Nexus. Yeah. But uh, the slow grind of the goblins continues. It's interesting. Goblins is, is a deck that you know a lot of people. A lot of people think when they think oh goblins think like oh like you know fast red beatdown. That's not what goblins really is. In Legacy. No, it's very much on the board, trying to get some sort of overwhelming advantage. And there's the beginnings of it. There's a chieftain, which is plus one, plus one in haste to all these goblins. And here come some goblins. Again, Adley being, I, I think, correctly very conservative, just leaving an extra yeah. blocker back on defense. Definitely to be as, uh, as careful avoid as possible the, Avoid ruin. <laughs> Cannot tell if uh, Craver is putting a block here on that Chieftain or not. Hmm. He is blocking the Chieftain, and... And hard casting growth. Now, Harley drew another uh, land for the turn here, so he is happy to um, use his Gem Home Incinerator in this spot, because right. he still has a land to hold down the port on the... Yeah, and Kraber's very low on, on actual resources here. Like, he... He doesn't really have what he needs to, to break through that Rashad in port anytime soon. Yeah. All right, it's tapped down. Here's a, he's just drawing a Necropede, I believe. Boom. Boom. Peedy weedy. Yeah. Here comes another Warchief. War Chief. And he can actually, because that the cost reduction on the Warchief, he can play the second Warchief in his hand and still keep up the Rashad in port. Yeah. So he's... As you're you know, saying, Goblins is very much a you know, sort of onboard critical mass deck. He's getting a ton of stuff into play that is uh, eventually going to overwhelm Charles Craver. And here comes a lot of Goblins. 4, 8, 10, 12. We're looking at lethal here. Uh, it looks like, yeah, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. No, not quite. Well, the war cheese are four fours, right? Uh, no, they don't give. You, they don't, they aren't plus one plus one. Oh, right? sorry, they're, yeah, yeah. There's two war cheese. Yeah, right. Yes. There's two war cheese and one chieftain. Sorry. Yeah, so it's uh, three, one, two, six, three, four, five, six, eight, ten, twelve. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah, twelve. So it'll put Charles to exactly one. Although, is he exposed again now? Like, is is the, if he doesn't have lethal? Oh, here, there is. The, yeah, he is. He is letting up the. The necropede, the necropede is actually going to get, get shot through, out. right? Huh. I'm not sure he. Uh, so we really thought that through fully. Okay, so... Yeah, all right, well... Here we go. We need an Invigorate. Here we do a Berserk. berserk. <laughs> Does he have a Ranker? No, it looks like he has a Forest and a Berserk. Ah, no! Not quite enough. <laughs> and it looks like he's uh, figuring it out and just... It says go. Yeah, yeah. Mike Hadley, you know, well, Presumably. if I'm not dead, you are. Unless he manages to get some sort of horrific game loss offense here, uh, Mike Hadley is going to take this for the rub ins. Yeah. I would probably just attack to see I would just attack. Like, Let's see where we're at. Charles has been, has been sort of picking up a lot of uh, Mike's cards and reading them, which would, yeah, I think, uh, 
seem to indicate at least that he's not all that familiar with the contents of the Goblins deck, so showing him a card like Siege Gang Commander gives him information that he wouldn't otherwise have. All right, we're going to Berserker <laughs> the Berserker Warchief. guy. <laughs> so, uh, Halley takes one. <laughs> is, is he just counting up the damage? They actually it's figuring it out? literal millions. <laughs> Alright, so let's look at the board here. Uh, Halley actually has a, a devastating sideboard for Ooh, the matchup with a full playset. Full playset of Pyrokinesis, which is. That's a card that you don't really see all that much of. You basically don't see outside of Goblin decks. Yes. But uh, in Goblin decks against other creature decks, it's absolutely devastating. Right, because Goblins has enough sources of card advantage uh, that they, they can, can afford, afford to two for one themselves to pick up tempo. Um, when we played in the top eight of the Invitational in Baltimore, uh, Jim Davis absolutely ruined me with Pyrokinesis out of his sideboard. Sure, yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely brutal. What, you, know, you you just goblin ringleader get things back. Yep. And uh, what is uh what do we got over here? He has two copies of Umazawa's Jit, and he also has two copies of Spellskite, which I'm not sure if he really wants here yeah, or I, not. I think my inclination is you actually just just present. Like I you know I, I could see bringing in Spellskite. Um, and maybe boarding out some of the ground creatures. Like mm -hmm. it seems, it seems like uh, Iker Claw Mirror, Plague Mirror, Necropede. Not really the sort of things that are going to get the job done yep. against the uh, the ground uh, clogging abilities of goblins. But I mean, maybe, maybe he wants Jitte in his deck. I don't know. Uh, I mean, if it's if it's in his sideboard, it has to be for something like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> my yeah, my inclination is that his ground creatures are are pretty ineffective here, and that he's uh, he's better off. You know, maybe maybe upgrading a, a few of them to uh, to spell skites and, and jetes. So, uh, was it was this other four of? Is it nature's claim? Oh, nature's claim. claim. Yeah. Okay, so that's the disenchant they gained for. Right. Yeah, I don't think he's really. Uh, I think he really wants that here. He can yeah, kill no. an aether vial, but that's not that big a deal. Right. He doesn't want to dilute his deck. You know, we saw that game when he you know, he just was slightly short in terms of the action that he actually needed. He, he needed one more growth effect, and uh, his Berserk would have been able to get it done. Yeah. I'm a little surprised that he's playing um, City of Traders instead of Ancient Tomb. This deck is like, much closer to a combo deck, uh -huh. so it seems like it's basically just a free roll, too. Maybe, yeah. I mean, he doesn't really have much use for that mana after the the initial uh, the initial investment. So, the, the the life could matter. Yeah, maybe if he's not tapping, is it, if he's not planning on tapping it more than twice. Right. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like he's basically using it to play a turn one, uh, turn one, two cost guy, and, and that's about it. Yeah. There's also the Elvis Spirit guys in this deck, which is like... Is that they are, better? They're a little peculiar in terms of you know, how, how good is it to get out the you know this early guy. Like and Spirit Guide does let you play you know something like a uh, you know, Vine's Berserk much easier. Yeah, I guess. Is, is it functionally any different from, um, from Lotus Petal in his deck? Uh, it's, it could be a surprise. Okay. Which I think is relevant. I mean, it's, it's also just... Yeah, I guess he can vine, he can like, vines of the vast wood off right. of a spirit guide yeah, where yeah. it's just like, how do you ever see that coming? Pedal, I mean, Pedal is both on board and, you know, can never have the potential upside of maybe you win a game with, with you know, an Elvis spirit guide attacking or blocking somehow. I mean, yeah. I doubt that's ever going to happen, but, you know, it's just going to be better than Lotus Pedal in, in, yeah, in I guess so. these situations. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So yeah, is there um, is there another pump spell that you could possibly be considering? I guess these are probably just the best ones. Um, I mean, I could see maybe he's having giant growth in your deck. You know, um, he may just want a uh, you know a higher density of actual growth effects. You know, it, it, again, we're seeing him play against a deck that's actually interacted him on the ground. So yeah. the the, fa the fact that uh, these guys aren't able to get in a couple points here and there uh, <laughs> it may not be representative of how it plays out in other matchups. Uh, but you know, from that game, it seems like it seems like those plague mirrors, you know, might have been better off as just more more giant growth effects to try and you know with the guy who actually does get through. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things that you can do with this deck too. Like in theory, you can play crop rotation as another spell just to like yeah. ensure that you have a nexus. Yeah. Like there's a lot of different things you could do. 
excuse me. But uh, here, I, I think, I think as you know, I, I can't speak to the uh, the meta game position of Mono Green in effect, but I have to imagine that Goblins is among among the worst matchups for it. Yeah. Just because you know it is reliant on connecting with uh, with ground creatures, and Goblins is so good at gumming up the ground. Yeah. And Goblins are good at blocking. They have a ton of tools to actually answer Ink Moth next. I mean, just get, poor I, I, imagine, imagine if Hadley just gets a Sharpshooter into play. Yes, which he actually does have he a does copy He does have a copy of, of Sharpshooter in his deck. A Sharpshooter is just... That is. <laughs> that is. G. G. As the kids say. Kramer's deck actually has a bunch of realistic turn two kills, though. Just like, dude yeah. into oh, Invigorate Berserk is just lethal. Yeah. So, um, Kramer is doing some counting on his fingers, which is never a <laughs> never a good sign of you're on the other side of it. Okay. What are you at? No, wait, you're always at ten. <laughs> it looks like uh, he's. I thought. He, I think he just mouth, I think he just mouthed the word mulligan. Oh, he's showing the hand. They go, uh, uh. Yeah, I guess if there's a, <laughs> yeah, if there's a going rabbit hunt, hunting. Yeah. yeah, I guess it, that's a hand that's lethal with a forest. Mm -hmm. I mean, and this is the sort of thing that that you see uh, a bit more, a bit more frequently in tournaments like Legacy, where a lot of players are sort of just they just there, they want to play their deck. You know, their deck's a lot of fun. I mean, in in, in you know uh, a lot of like standard tournaments, you know. You, you would rarely see someone be like, oh man, look at this hand that I, you know, I really wanted to keep. Yeah. So a, a lot more sort of casual atmosphere among uh, among legacy players, I think, yeah, than, well, uh, than a lot of other sort of competitive. Uh, competitive you definitely get way more of an atmosphere of like guys who've been playing for a long time. Yeah. And this is the one tournament every six months that they play in. Yeah. You know, there's I mean, much more of the. Charles parties. actually came by the booth earlier today. Uh, he, uh, briefly chatted with us, and uh, yeah, he said that he you know, he'd been playing you know years and years and years ago. Started playing again. Uh, I think it was he said something about a year ago, and it was largely uh, the Star City Games Legacy series, Legacy Open series, that, that got him back in the game because you know he he was able to watch people playing, you know, all these cards he remembered from you know playing way back when that he really liked, and uh, you know now he comes out for Legacy tournaments when he yep. has the opportunity. All right, looks like looks like he's keeping his six. Mission Tomb into uh, Iker Clamir. That's a bit. The guy guy's a bit harder to uh, to block. Yeah. And Hadley with nothing. Turn one. Is he dead? I hope he's dead. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like a nice enough guy. Or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm not saying I'm it. I'm not so wishing yeah. ill upon him in any way other than I hope that he gets he bigger at Berserk right now. So we're. Figuring out what we're gonna do with the city of traders. It looks like we're getting our second tap. Yep. Ooh. Ooh. This could do some work. Nice. I think he's debating whether he wants to play another land here. I mean, maybe he has like a forest and not another land. Yep. Playing another land here actually ends up being pretty rough because um, uh, Hadley has a port in his hand, so he can just get sure, locked. Sure. Yeah. Up. Big X getting in, doing his, doing his thing. <laughs> Iker Klamir, not a card most people play in Constructed. But uh, kind of an awesome one in the right context. Jose Ramos, please come up to the side of the stage. Jose Ramos, please come up to the stage. Yeah, Charles, it looks like still debating about whether or not he wants to play his... Uh, his second land here. <laughs> Look, he's uh, very much doing his talking out loud. He's thinking out loud. All right, he's going to pass it back. And Mike, I think, has just thrown a wasteland to go along with his Rashad and Port. Well, that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I, I think you'd rather Port because Port can basically induce um, Charles to have to play a second land, and then you can save your wasteland for something else down the line. Yeah. So I think you'd rather lead with Port here. I agree with that. I mean, if you're if you're Mike Hadley, you have to you have to be feeling a little, a little scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 
If you don't have pyrokinesis in your hand, then there's yeah, you can just beat you, it. Yeah, you, this is a this is a real sweat. It's also possible you could just lose to him having another city of traitors and then putting jit on his guy and then you just can't get out from under. And All right, so he's yeah, porting. Those at the port. So uh, Charles draws. Does he have forest invigorate berserk vines of the vastwood? Yeah. I actually can't cast all those. But. No. The proverbial turn one charm Bur Bur kill through a uh, <laughs> force of will. Yeah. The turn three in fact kill over the top of pyrokinesis. All right. So this is happening. <laughs> Charles uh, cursing his city of traitors. And he is adding a glistening uh -oh. glistener elf to the board. We've got two threats now. Did you just draw a Tuk Tuk? The Explorer? No, he's a Scrapper. Oh, no. Tuk Tuk Scrapper. Yeah, I, I cannot recognize the art of the card he's just drawn. No. He has a variety. He has a, actually a bunch yeah. of jump palms in his hand, but he can't cast a goblin and also right. cycle his jump palm. That's a Scrapper. That's a Tuk Tuk Scrapper that, that you're, uh, you're looking at. And Hadley can't just be porting forever. Like right. he's got to be advancing his board at some point. Yeah. Here. He's got a go Does he just cast a jet incinerator? <laughs> yeah, you gotta. I was taking a look at uh, 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 Jitte here. This is a challenge I'm like. One Hadley has faced before, I'm willing to wager. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, well, when this came up in playtesting, yeah. the way that I hit I really like the Infect matchup. Oh, God, there's a sharpshooter. Oh, shooter. God, that was a sharpshooter. <laughs> you got to win right now. You got to get Jit on your guy or kill him up pronto. Yeah. Otherwise, this is over. Yeah. Well, I added this to my deck for the Infect matchup. <laughs> 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 we, got some, uh, we got some guns coming out. Yeah. Does he have a land to suit up? No. Oh, oh boy. Land. So you just put it on your Icar Claw mirror here? Yeah. And then probably attack with only just the mirror. You don't want him to trade if you're just free rolling with, with the gym. Probably. Yep. Well, no, he's going to he's gonna get in there with both. Yeah. Oh, Matt. 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 <laughs> Matt. <laughs> Haven't taken my hands off. Ah! Oh, there you go. Hands off. Stop. There you go. All right. Both of them are getting in. Yep. So he's uh, gonna trade off here. Blocks. So Hadley had two poisons so far. Are we gonna keep him alive? All right. We're gonna be a giant growth here. Pyrokinesis would still be devastating. Yeah, pyrokinesis. But uh, would I'm, be I'm getting the vibe that it's not the nuts. It's, is it not in the hand? I do not see it. It's pretty easy to, to, to recognize a, a bunch of fire going everywhere. Alright, so. Oh. Yep, takes one poison, puts two counters in the Jitte. And uh, Kraber firmly, firmly in the driver's seat now. <laughs> and still no second red source of mana, so he, he basically needs to get to a point where he can cast two spells. Or yeah, at least play a spell in, and it's like a jump shape, yeah. yeah, now now the game's like I mean, if he, if he has if he had a land he could, could play his tuck tuck. Just has a trump blocking pile driver, it looks like. Yeah, that's that's not gonna do it. <laughs> so Hadley passes the turn. We may be getting them all in there. I mean, there is still always the threat that that Charles gets blown out by uh, by pyrokinesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially if he's not predicting it. He may just be like, okay, well, I'll pump this. 
you know, with with just a for lethal, and uh, and may just you know end up getting crushed by it. So yeah, the question is if he's willing to. I mean, another question before combat is if he's willing to just turn his nexus on and and get it wastelanded. I'm pretty sure. Right. With uh, Hadley stalled on lands here, you're just happy to make that that sort of exchange. Also, that wasteland is just not going anywhere anyway. So right, it's, it's not like you know. Oh, he's casting a plague mirror. Okay. Sure. Pre-combat plague mirror, so I guess he doesn't doesn't get wastelanded. Are we just killing that? I think he's just going to kill the him before con. Sure. Okay. I probably just send both yeah, first, because then and you can save one counter. If he blocks the yeah, glistener blocks elf, then you can it. shrink it to a zero one. And yeah, this gets one more poison in, but uh, but I think the uh, well, the, the counter, counter is worth is, two. Is yeah. So yeah, I think I think that I, I agree with your suggestion. Hadley goes to five poison. Yeah. And uh, counters in the Jade. All right, there's a second red mana, which is what Hadley really needed here. Maybe a little too late. Yeah, yeah, it might not be enough, but. He's facing down the undefeatable army of the Vet creatures. Yeah. So, I mean, he can, he can play a Tuk Tuk Scrapper. Looks like he's in his hand, definitely in his sideboard, and that can kill Jute potentially. But that would just kill Jute would just kill the Scrapper, and he would have uh, he'd be dead to basically anything. Yeah. So I don't know that he has a choice. Yeah, there's a the Scrapper. So he's gonna kill Jute. Presumably, <laughs> he's gonna gun this thing down. So uh, Legacy is certainly a format where you can see lots of different things and uh, you, know, you may not have seen them before. So it's pretty important to, to read your opponent's cards when you're not familiar with them. Yeah. You know, a, lot, a lot of times players you just sort of assume they know how things work. And uh, it's pretty important that you actually know how things work and not just, you know, want to look clever. And not necessarily in this example, but there's a lot of cards that are just poor or awkwardly templated from back right. in the day. Um, but, you know, you'll often even want to ask a, a judge how it works. Yes. If your opponent ever casts Chains of Mephistopheles... Ask yes. a judge how it works. Yeah. It is likely the judge will not know. And that's not an indictment on the judges. That <laughs> card is just incomprehensible. Yeah. So, not quite positive what we're waiting on here. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming he's just going to kill this grapper. Oh, he's killing oh, the, okay. the guy. Oh, okay. Sure. And that's a berserk, which I'm. I, this has to base. This has to kill him, right? Well, he just equips the jit. Oh yeah, yeah, for trample. Pump, pump, berserk. I mean, he has a mutagenic growth, so he can actually go over the top of. Berserk. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. Ah. He's, I think he didn't have his music genic growth for back. All right. There we go. There we go. Game three. All right. Well, we're going we're gonna to see some more Infect on Goblins action. I love a good Berserk action. It's yeah. actually, uh, I hope this is a, uh, a feature of every open that I get to do is I get one Berserk feature match. <laughs> Last time it was uh, Death, the 13-13, the that's minus one, minus one for each. Uh, Death Shadow. Oh, nice. Death Shadow Berserk off of like a plunge in the darkness for infinite was the last one. That's this awesome. is a. Uh, if anything, this is actually a little more straightforward. Wasn't it, <laughs> wasn't it like not even that long ago that Berserk was like unbanned in Legacy? I don't think I don't necessarily I don't think that's true because I remember at Worlds like back in the like seven or eight years ago, uh, Eugene Harvey wanted Berserks for his affinity deck for the Legacy okay. portion and was unwilling to spend the. You know, two hundred dollars of sure. on the berserks or whatever. 
<laughs> so. That guy killed me on purpose So, uh. <laughs> The but, uh, table note from the judge that apparently is uh, wired into our uh, into our stream saying change is easy. If change of Mephistopheles is easy, I don't know if anything qualifies as hard. It's like humility, listed, I guess. Humility, Ob yeah. yeah, the old replenish and opalescence, humility, and so a blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And a chains of Mephistopheles. Yeah. <laughs> Please remove that person with that deck. And <laughs> yeah, the ruling is go away. Yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> so uh in the background of Craver you can see his uh, uh who i believe is his son who i was uh he was the mono red player i was birding earlier today who had a good sweat <laughs> against uh, austin yost in round one darn it made my whole weekend <laughs> just couldn't wait to chain him do you remember when when uh, when berserk was uh was restricted though like way back in the day when when berserk was among the moxes Right on the restricted list, along with cards like Cormus Bell. Yeah, Hadley or, I looks actually, like. I actually remember. Isn't isn't verbatim, but I remember that the, the when they, they you know restricted all these cards. That the, the, you know why is this card restricted? Yeah, yeah. The 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 justification given for Berserk being restricted was like failure to have a fog shouldn't justify twenty damage. That was that was what the restricted list justifications sounded like back then. Right. I'm not I'm not making that up. Yeah. I could not make that up. This was really what they said. You know, nowadays you get like multi-page articles. It's like, well, you know, R and D thought this, this, and this, and you know, based on the results of these. No, man, it just—I I didn't have a fog and I died. And so that sucked, like, so I restricted berserk. Like, so it looks like Hadley has a uh, mulligan to a turn one mount and lackey. All right, could and, potentially uh, lead to a pretty uh, could potentially lead to the death knell. Very soon, if uh, Kraber doesn't have a turn one play. Oh, but he has that that same. See, traders turn. into a knucklehead. Iker Claw Mirror, unfortunately, does not does not gain its ability on defense. Well, fortunately, because that card would be even more infuriating to play against limited than it already was. Unfortunately for Charles. Yes. And uh, port for Mike. Port pretty devastating against that uh, city of traders. And Hadley has a pyrokinesis in his hand, so mm. that could potentially lead to a. Uh, a comical lopsided blowout at some point in this game. Yeah, something something could go horribly, horribly wrong for someone. Oh, he's just gonna change. He's gonna f snap it off right now. This must mean he must have With another sharpshooter. He's gonna have some Pitching awesome. Pitching a sharpshooter. He's got a he's got a siege gang maybe up in there. He means business. Yeah. Let's see. All right. Yeah, it's in. All right. Do your worst. You hit me. What you got? Oh, a ringlet. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Spin the wheel. If he breaks off here, though, he's out of gas. So. Yeah, he had, he had nothing else left, I think. Yeah, he just has a land. <laughs> he has a... Oh, there's a siege Ooh. gang. All right. And, a, and Is that a gem palm? No, it's another lackey. Oh, lackey. Okay. Well, he's going to want to play that second lackey, because that means he is that much more likely to get through, I think. Well, the issue, like, is that better than is porting? That porting? I don't know. I don't know. Like, if Kramer makes two plays, you're basically just gummed up. Sure, that's true. But, I mean, in that case, he's going to have to play a land uh, and uh, lose a city of trainers, which is going to make your port that much better. Yeah. It looks like he's uh, just... Nope. Yeah. All right. Kramer <laughs> seems to be uh, expressing some... Unhappy about his situation. Draws. He drew a city trader, so if he has another two mana guy, he can at least play something and block. Yep. Yeah. But. Oh, he's playing a four. Right, so does he have a uh, Glistener Elf or something? Uh oh. Oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Here, Here they come. come. Siege Gang is in play. Siege Gang is very. Boom. Siege Gang is very difficult for the deck that does not. Like. Plays two and three mana for creatures that are not as good as uh, Siege Gang activation. Yeah. <laughs> so Kramer's, Kramer's in a rough spot now. His, uh, his proverbial goose, I believe, is cooked. Yeah. If he has an Ink Moth Nexus and... A Vines. He could poke a Vines yeah. And several Invigorates. He could win this. Or Otherwise, I'm not liking his chances. I like the unglued goblin tokens too, keeping it yeah, classy. You know. 
All right. Well, I guess he's gonna. We're gonna try to induce Ooh, a rancor. Uh, okay. A Does he have a mutagen growth or an invigorant? Response. Uh oh. Checking out the siege gang. Oh, it does that. Uh oh. And rank her down that's along a, with that the. That is a. That should. Along with Icky. I assume that's gonna do her. Yeah, I would be hard pressed to think of a way that Charles Craver gets out of this one. So he's attacking here for seven. It looks like he gets to trigger his uh, trigger his lackey again. And another ring leader. Ooh, that's that's a pretty good one. Into nothing. Four but I don't think it's gonna matter. Yeah. He's got quite enough already. It's gonna Port. tap the city of traders. Blocks down city. Charles draws. Play the forest. City dies. Plays a glistener, glistener elf. elf. <laughs> Probably not going to cut it. I suspect that it will not. Concordant crossroads. <laughs> no. All right. Mike untaps. And income. Oh no, he's just gonna kill that. He's gonna get gonna get vines. All right. And the squad comes in. I believe this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So he has to trade here. He doesn't, he doesn't actually get the. Well, he's a trade. Yeah, he with a ring the ringleader. Right. Well, he's only one one. He's five, six, seven, eight. Sure, that was his gang. That's cool. <laughs> so Craver believes at one life, and he's staring down, you know, siege gang, and uh, doesn't really have anything. There's that nexus. Now he needs a concordant crossroads. And. And. Um, and. <laughs> and. I think Craver may, uh, may just be enjoying his time on camera at this point. <laughs> I'll activate. I'll do it. You. And there it is. There it is. It. And so uh, Mike Hadley's Goblin deck manages to take down Charles Craver and his Infect deck two games to 